Welcome back. We're doing Children's Liturgy again. We're all very excited. And today is the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. It's going to be not the last Ordinary Time one, but we're going to take a break from it and then we're going to move into Lent. And next week you'll be learning more and more about Lent and what to do. Also today, the, um, on Saturday, um, was to come and get your uh, flaw material for grades one to three. Exciting. And um, I'm just happy to be back. What else is going on besides everything else in the world? Um, tomorrow, uh, today, Sunday, is Valentine's Day. Okay, so wish your parents a happy Valentine's. Still have time to make stuff. You know, homemade Valentine's are the best. All right, so let's start with the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. And the first reading is from the book um, of Leviticus. And it is written in the law. Now remember, this is the Old Testament. Okay, People who have a scab or an open sore on their skin and it becomes leprosy must be brought to one of the priests. The priest must tell them that they are unclean. Okay? Because anyone with leprosy is considered unclean by the law. Those who have leprosy must wear torn clothes and must not wear anything on their heads. They must live outside the camp, away from the other people. And when they come into the town, they must shout out, Unclean! Unclean! They will be considered unclean, and as long as they have the disease of leprosy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to talk about more about leprosy after the gospel, because uh, Mark also talks about a leprosy and what it meant back in the time of um, Jesus. It had no cures, so people were very, very standoffish to anyone who did have leprosy. Okay, So our response today is, my God, my God, have mercy on me. Okay, You see, I am in trouble. You know what makes me sad. My God, my God, have mercy on me. O oh God, you are my strength. My life is in your hands. My God, my God, have mercy on me. Very good. Okay, and of heart, big day. Okay, so we're going to have the gospel um, beginning. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Okay. Um, and this is the reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Okay, I'm going to stand up for this. Right. Okay, so we want to bless our thoughts and our words and our feelings and actions. Okay. A man with leprosy came to Jesus and knelt down. He begged Jesus, you have the power to make me well, if only if you wanted to. Jesus felt sorry for the man, so he put his hand on him and said, I want to. Now you are well. And at once the man's leprosy disappeared, and he was well. After Jesus strictly warned the man, he sent him on his way. Jesus said to the man, don't tell anyone about this. Just go and show the priest that you are well. Then take a gift to the temple as Moses commanded, and everyone will know that you have been healed. The man talked about it so much and told so many people that Jesus could no longer go openly into the town. He had to stay away from the towns, but people still came to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, why do you think Jesus told him not to tell everybody? Well, this is an easy one. He wanted him just, according to the law back then, it was the priests that deemed a person a leper. With a, I read it in Leviticus all about the things. Imagine being outside of the town or a camp. And you're sitting there, 
yelling at the people going by, I'm unclean, I'm unclean, and people are running away. The isolation that person must have felt at that time. Now remember, this is way back in time. There was no medicine or cure for leprosy. And um, the depression a person could have, the sadness a person could experience, it was like unbelievable. But Jesus came along. And the one thing that you're not supposed to do is to touch someone that has leprosy because back then it was very contagious. Okay, but Jesus took his hands and, and held the man's hand and cured him. Now, Jesus wanted him to tell no one because then everyone would be looking for a miracle or a cure. But the man did not disobey Jesus because he was bragging. He was so inspired by how this man, and he believed in Jesus and what he heard of him, that he wanted other people to know that he is a good person and he is here to help us. Okay? And um, leprosy, as I said, was contagious. Uh, you'd be disfigured. And was common at the time of Jesus. Um, the disease would cover, um, cause great fear among the people, panic. Okay, uh, and today uh, we have situations that make us very upset, very nervous, you know. We're trying to keep ourselves safe from any viruses. And um, you could see why the people were very nervous when someone had leprosy. Okay, it meant that the physical and social isolation for each person lasted their whole lives. There was no cure, therefore, fear from other people. Ignorance and lack of compassion forced lepers to live outside the town. A warning bell was given to them, so they would ring the bell too to tell someone that lepers were around. So imagine being one of these people. And in today's world, in today's society, we have people who are poor, homeless, foodless, alone, and do we take the time to take care of them? Well, here at Lay the Lake, we have many ministries. If you're a Boy Scout, a Girl Scout, or on a, a team, a sports team, um, you bring canned goods to the food pantries, you raise money to give to Jenny's and other um, organizations, because just showing someone that you do care without calling them names, being a bully, you know, and um, ostracizing people will make you a better person. We're supposed to imitate Jesus and what Jesus did. So here's one of the examples with the leper. We are to be kind to people. Sometimes it is kind of hard to be to some people, but you have to remember we are all God's children. Okay? We are all God's children. And we need to help. So you put away all the meanness, and uh, we will be better people. So we have to always take a deep breath. <sighs> right before we say something, we take a deep breath. <sighs> before we might do an action that's not appropriate, okay? And we will be better people. So basically, we're just supposed to imitate Jesus. So if you read up on him, you will know. So. We are entering Lent, okay, and in the past, um, when you would come to church, you'd see the priest wearing purple, okay, wearing purple, um, parents not eating meat, having more fish on Fridays, fasting. This Wednesday coming up is Ash Wednesday, okay, and the, which starts Lent. So it's not always about giving up something. I always said I would give up uh, chocolate, okay? And the only chocolate I like is m and M, so that wasn't, you know, too hard to give up. And, uh, uh, but in the past, we've been saying at the CCD classes, instead of giving something up, you should do something, pay it forward. How can we pay something forward? Well, let's look at what we've got now. We have either hybrid school or remote school or maybe all day school. Um, there are places we can't go to. Um, 
dropping things off, you know, a lot of takeout food. So you're probably saying, well, what am I going to give up? Or what can I do during Lent? Well, it is very easy for us to do. And what we can do is pray it forward. We can pray. Praying is the easiest thing that we can do. Okay? Prayer is when we lift our hearts and minds to meet God. We want to ask for his help for others or someone else. We can do that. We pray to praise God and to express delight for all the wonderful gifts he's given us. We can do that every day. Okay? Uh, when we feel that God has answered us, our prayers become a way of thanking him for the love he has shown. Okay? How, why, where, where do we pray? Okay? Uh, prayer is important. It keeps us in touch with God and we hold a conversation with him. We can pray without words. We can sing songs, listen to music, uh, praying undisturbed and in silence. Find a place you like. Maybe it's not, you know, in your bedroom or maybe someplace outside. Maybe, you know, in the kitchen by yourself, setting the table for mom and dad at, at uh, dinner time. Find a place, and it doesn't have to be out loud, it could be just in your mind. Okay, prayer helps our faith and trust in God to grow. Wherever you want to be, that's the place to be. I used to say when I was in school before I begin the day, I would say a little prayer. No one heard me. I I didn't really bless myself. I was just saying, God, please help me today and keep me safe. And hopefully, I'll know all the answers. <laughs> We need to speak to God every day for just a little time. So what can we do? <clears throat> okay. Have a plan. Who are you going to pray for? <clears throat> Family members. That's good. People we don't know. That's even better. Could we pay for, pray for people that in need? Yes. That would be a good one. We don't know them, but we know they need our help. So if everyone was praying, do you think people would be helped? I do. I believe in that. Okay, Praying together with others in the family is a good idea. Unite us, brings us closer to God. We are encouraged to think not just about our needs, but the needs of others. Okay, Jesus reminds us that the power of healing and the power of helping, besides being a miracle, does work. Jesus taught us if we pray with a humble heart, not a mean heart, not a bragging heart, a humble heart. God will always hear us, even if we think our prayers seem to be unanswered. We need to be patient and persevere. We need to move on. Okay? We don't always get what we want, but we have other things to be thankful for. So, if you're thinking about what you can give up or what you can do for Lent, you got a few days to think about it. Make a plan. Where are you going to, how are you going to pray? Why are you going to pray? Where are you going to pray? Okay? And really, you get in a routine of doing that, and you find out you're a happier person, a kinder person. Okay? I was reading in the newspaper yesterday about a boy up in Skyview who decided to put bags of food together, and all the things, anything that was, in, the only thing that was in the bag with things to make yourself a birthday cake. Okay. Who would have thought of that? I would not have thought of that. So he must have prayed on it. He must have thought about it long and hard. What does everyone have every year? You have a birthday. Okay. So little things like that, physically, that you can do. But for ourselves and spiritually, we can pray. So boys and girls, I am very thrilled to be back. Happy Valentine's Day, and good luck with your praying routine.